And welcome to this segment of a special interaction on the world of aviation. How our country has gone ahead to become the third largest aviation market. Joining me on this interaction today is a very special guest who has a deep insight into the aviation sector of the country. I'm being joined by Kinjal Shah, who's the senior VP and co-group head corporate ratings at the ICRA Limited. Kinjal, welcome to the show. Uh, I am sure and I'm hopeful that we'll get a lot of insight from you with regard to the aviation sector, the happenings in the aviation sector, the passenger influx, both in a domestic as well as international arena. To begin with, I would want to start on a budget note. The union budget 2024-25 is just around the corner. What do you think, Kinjal, is the, are the expectations of the aviation sector from the forthcoming budget and from the speech of the finance minister, Nirmala Sitaraman? What can we really expect? Uh, yeah, so um, see, as always, uh, I think one of the my major expectations of the Indian aviation industry is uh, the rationalization of the duty structure on the aviation turbine fuel, as well as inclusion of the same under GST. Uh, this has been the expectation for over a long time now. Um, also, uh, I think as always, uh, the budget is expected to reiterate the focus on improving the regional connectivity through either the regional connectivity scheme or UDAN. Uh, the budget is also probably likely to focus on setting up new airports and expanding the existing airport capacities at some key airports uh, because of the current uh, uh, airport infrastructure constraints that are being faced by the airlines. Uh, it will also focus on connectivity with the underserved or the unserved destinations to further boost tourism. Uh, further, we feel that uh, in line with the government's increasing trust on the Atma Nirbhar or Make in India initiative, uh, the budget could also focus on incentivizing the maintenance repair overall sector, uh, which is currently very uh, feeble in India, and uh, also push towards building requisite infrastructure for promoting aircraft leasing business domestically. So, Kinjal, you spelt out a host or a clutch of uh, expectations from the aviation sector. Let's, let's decipher them and let's break them into a few sub-segments. Uh, you know, you started, uh, started by replying on... ATF, the aviation turbine fuel. So every time what happens is that there's a, there's a hike, there's a rise in the ATF, different cities get affected differently. Can we not have a mechanism in place where the ATF hike, fuel hike is such that it's, it's, it's pan-India, the impact is the same. All cities get impacted same. For instance, somebody who books a ticket from Chennai or somebody who books a ticket from Punjab or somebody who books a ticket from Uttar Pradesh gets impacted in a similar manner. Could there be a mechanism like this for ATF? Yeah, that, that's the uh, precise reason why uh, the industry has also been expecting that if the ATF gets covered under GST, uh, this problem will automatically get resolved because the uh, duty or the tax rate on ATF would be common across India. And that would be uh, uh, what you've been deciding. You know, uh, we have the budget in a year where the oil demand, the global oil demand is expected to be below normal this year, the crude. How, uh, having said that, the crude prices have also been softened to a great extent, despite the fact that we've had a lot of geopolitical tensions. We had the Red Sea issue, we had the Houthi attacks there, and we've had the Israel-Gaza uh, uh, conflict. But despite that, oil prices have been time and again softening. So do you think that, you know, going into the budget, we'll have a, a sort of a provision where you're saying that, you know, bring it under the GST regime, of course. If that doesn't happen, what do you think is the other way of conducting the ATF exercise, the ATF uh, fuel price exercise? Do you think there's any other mechanism that we can have in place if it is not brought under, G under the GST? Uh, frankly, no. I mean, over the years, uh, people have uh, spoken about a lot of things, but we've been continuing with uh, the mechanism which is currently there. And I think we'll continue to see this volatilities in the uh, ATF prices, which is being linked to the crude oil prices. And if it doesn't get covered under GST, I think we'll continue to see the volatilities and the industry will have to uh, somehow manage the volatilities by passing on it on to the customers to a large extent. You know, as far as ATF is concerned, you know, it, it happens all of a sudden that, you know, from a consumer's point of view, a consumer, a flyer, a traveler gets to hear that there's an ATF rise and airlines have passed on the burden to the flyer in terms of increasing the airfares. You know, the way we have had uh, the fuel prices deregulated in the country, I'm again post, uh, posing this question to you, is there a mechanism that it doesn't happen so often? You know, we've had last six months, six to eight months, we had almost six to seven times when ATF has been increased. 
And a city like Chennai, for instance, gets the maximum impacted, or a city like Bangalore gets the maximum impacted. So this is one big burden on that ticket cost, that ATF. You think there's, you know, just to, just to explain it to our viewers, you think, do you reckon that we can have a mechanism in place where the burden is not time and again on the flyer? See, it happens both ways. I mean, if we were to look at FI24 uh, on a YY basis compared to FI23, uh, the ATF prices were lower by around 14%. But yes, in the last few months, if we see on a YY basis, we've again seen an increase uh, uh, in April, May, June as well on a YY basis. Uh, though sequentially, uh, some of these months, the ATF prices have still declined. So uh, yes, I mean, while there could be uh, price increases in some months, there would also be price increases in the other months. And uh, uh, accordingly, uh, the price increase uh, declines would also be passed on to the customers. Um, as of now, I don't have an answer to your question of having a mechanism uh, to rule out the volatility. Um, I think that's inherent uh, to the business nature and uh, that will continue. Certainly. Uh, Kinjal, you, you mentioned about the regional connectivity, which is a very interesting aspect, which I'll come to a little later. Before that, I'll touch upon aspects such as the airport development fee, ADF, which is again a burden, you know, which pinches the... Uh, the consumer, every time there's an, an airport, a particular airport, presses in an airport development fee, the ticket price balloons, it, it increases. So what is your perspective with regard to the airport development fee, especially smaller airports, which are not seeing that much of an expansion, but where the ADF is pressed time and again? Your perspective on ADF, if you could just share something with us. So uh, I think that was the purpose of this entire uh, regional connectivity scheme or ODAN, where they said that uh, there would be these airports uh, which would be uh, opened up at uh, the unserved or uh, smaller cities and where uh, these various charges, uh, including the uh, airport development fee, etc., uh, would be much lower compared to what you see in the major uh, metro cities or the other tier one cities. And um, uh, the entire scheme of this regional connectivity scheme was uh, with the perspective that uh, these charges would be lower, they would provide viability gap funding to the airlines so that overall the cost for the uh, consumers on these uh, tier two or three routes would be much lower than what you're seeing on the metros. And that's how this entire uh, scheme has been progressing. And um, uh, this is uh, th there are uh, fare caps also uh, on the uh, routes, depending on the kilometers uh, that the uh, airline is going to fly. So overall, the scheme is aimed at providing uh, the uh, lower airfares to the consumers so that more uh, consumers can fly uh, the, on the air. But Kinjal, practically speaking, there are a lot of smaller centers in the country where the Udan has not really taken off, where the Udan has really not fulfilled its purpose. You think the, the first full-fledged budget of the Modi 3.0 government will actually give wings to Udan and actually have its presence in those, you know, neglected smaller centers also? Uh, yeah, uh, you're right in that point. So uh, we've seen a mix on uh, the success of Udan. Uh, there have been certain routes where we've seen Udan being highly successful. There have been certain routes where we've not seen uh, it to be successful. So it uh, ultimately pans out to two, uh, two things. One is, uh, what is the passenger load factor on that route? Uh, and that would depend ultimately on how is the other connectivity with respect to railways, roadways, etc. on that route. And how is the airfare being priced compared to the other modes of uh, commuting? So if the airfares are uh, going to be significantly higher than the other modes of commuting, then obviously the passenger load factor on those routes would turn out to be lower. But that said, uh, the uh, aim of this government has always been to uh, provide uh, connectivity to these uh, unserved na uh, nations, uh, unserved cities, and uh, uh, we expect that this would continue even in the current budget. Can we expect some sort of an offbeat tourism medical tourism and other sort of like, you know, we can expect a boost to student exchange because we have, we have a lot of students traveling from smaller centers, smaller cities, which are their residences, which are their hometowns to larger centers. So my question to, it's a very pointed question to you, which is that, you know, can we have, instead of full-fledged, a Boeing or a larger aircraft, you know, designated for an Udan service, can we have something like small charter planes, you know, especially to, uh, geographies which are like, you know, topographies which are like quite difficult. We have airports at places like, for instance, we have the Leh Airport where to which connectivity could be boosted with the help of Udan. So uh, my question to you is that, again, smaller neglected uh, centers which are topographically difficult, 
you know, whether they are in the plains or they are in the hills, especially in the hills of northeast Jammu and Kashmir, the Union Territory of Ladakh, how do you think this circuit could be provided a boost with the help of Udan? So, uh, in fact, in this Udan, uh, uh, the uh, whole uh, point is that the, you don't use these wide body aircrafts. You're using the narrow body aircrafts and much smaller ones uh, with lower number of seats. So, what you're saying is already happening in many of these routes. And, uh, Some more news coming in. More news.